Hey everybody and welcome to Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking out the video. Here at Whiteboard Medicine, our goal is to create medical education content for all types of interested learners. That includes videos, practice questions, study resources, and much more. We would love for you to join our community by subscribing, hit that bell button. We're also working to build a high yield Patreon page. It's gonna be full of practice questions, video outlines, notes, commercial free content, and much more. None of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety hey before everybody and on. welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking it out today. Central Venous Pressure Measurement Basics, aka CVP. So we're going to talk about what CVP or central venous pressure is. We're going to talk about how to measure it, how not to measure it, the phlebostatic access, zeroing, what normal values are, what they mean, etc., etc. Quick shout out for those interested. Uh, our Patreon page is linked in the video description. This is our Patreon page. If you have an interest uh, and want to join, we post all the video outlines um, that you're able to download and follow along if you have an interest in that. Um, otherwise, no further ado, CVP. So first starting with what CVP is. So CVP, aka central venous pressure, is just what it is describing. It's the central pressure of the venous system. So venous being veins, right? Central being close to heart, and pressure being pressure, right? So it's the pressure in the veins close to the heart. If this is a heart here, uh, great uh, illustration drawn by us. Um, but we have, this is the right atrium, right ventricle. This is the tricuspid valve. Then this is the left atrium, left ventricle. This is the mitral valve, okay? This is the pulmonary artery system going to the lungs, all right? And then this is the aortic arch up here. So this vessel here and this vessel here are what we're going to focus on because this is the inferior vena cava or the IVC and this is the superior vena cava or the SVC and these are the two big veins that dump blood into the right side of the heart or the right atrium so these are kind of the central veins closest to the heart um, this gets it from the upper body right so if we were to draw a little stick man over here so we got a stick man could be a stick woman too um, and we have their heart all right so here's their heart here and the top of the body, all the venous blood from the top of the body, the brain and everything, would dump into the superior vena cava and then go into the heart, whereas all the blood from the lower body, lower extremities, torso, and everything like that would dump into the inferior vena cava and into the heart. So that's what these two are, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. Well, if we're talking about measuring the CVP, the central venous pressure, the pressure in the veins closest to the heart or centrally, what we are talking about is measuring a pressure as close as we can to this area, right? This is the cavoatrial junction, all right? The cavoatrial junction. And why do we call it that? Well, it's just based on the names, right? So this is the superior vena cava, SVC, oh, let us meet our computer. And this is the right atrium. So the cavoatrial junction is where the superior vena cava meets the right atrium or cavoatrial. And that gives us this marker for the filling pressure of the right side of the heart, all right? Or the filling pressure, the pressure on the cavoatrial junction. And let's talk about what that means. Let's elucidate that, tease it out a little bit. The filling pressure on the right side of the heart. Well, pressure is exactly what it sounds like. It's a measurement that you can take using a catheter and a transducer. And that pressure measurement of the right side of the heart is the pressure at this cavoatrial junction. So what you essentially do is you have to have a way, an invasive line that sits right at this cavoatrial junction that you can transduce a pressure. And that pressure is then a surrogate for your right atrial pressure, because this is your right atrium right here. So if you have a catheter sitting in the cavoatrial junction right here and you measure a pressure at the end of that catheter, at the cavoatrial junction, that's going to be a surrogate for the right atrial pressure. And that can be important for a number of reasons. It helps give us an idea of fluid status. It can help give us an idea of cardiac function um, because obviously this is blood filling pipes and chambers. That's what it is. And if you have a lot of blood in a pipe, you're going to have a higher pressure in that pipe. If you have just a little bit of blood in that pipe, you're going to have a lower pressure in that pipe. 
The plot's a lot thicker than that, but it is a simple way to kind of get a foundational understanding of what exactly this is. Um, so the central venous pressure is at the cavo atrial junction, right? Cava being superior vena cava, atria being right atria, and the junction of the two. And it's a surrogate for the right atrial pressure or the filling pressure of the right side of the heart, aka the pressure in this area when blood is flowing into the heart. All right? The measurement of it requires what we call a central venous catheter or a pulmonary artery catheter, PAC. We won't dive into that too much, but a central venous catheter. And that is a central line, if anyone has heard of that. Uh, those that haven't, it's essentially a long IV that you put in, typically at the neck, and you kind of put it all the way down and try to get it to end right at this cavoatrial junction. So if we were to do just another kind of side drawing over here, um, you have a head, this is a patient's neck, going down to their shoulders and their heart, You're kind of sitting right here, whoop. And then this is their uh, internal jugular vein. This is their subclavian vein. And they're all kind of stringing together into the SVC. All right, so this is the internal jugular vein. This is the subclavian vein. And you can access either of these to put in a central line. You essentially poke in the skin at the neck or poke in the skin kind of by the clavicle. You put a needle in, then you string a guide wire in. And then you put a catheter over the guide wire. So the catheter kind of sits at the outside of the neck, all right? And then the catheter goes in through the internal jugular vein to the SVC, and you try to get the end of the catheter to sit right at that cavoatrial junction, or it goes into the subclavian vein into the SVC, right? And since the catheter is sitting right at that cavoatrial junction, like we talked about, you can introduce a pressure off that catheter to see what this right atrial pressure is. But you need a central line, and you can put central lines in the femoral veins as well, which are the veins in the groin, but that goes doesn't go to that cavoatrial junction. So getting a, a CVP off of femoral central line is, you know, pretty much useless. There isn't a real reason to do it. It has to be a central line in either the internal jugular vein or the subclavian vein, and you want the end of that catheter to be as close to the cavoatrial junction as possible. Sometimes you'll put in these central lines and the end of the catheter will sit way up here in the superior vena cava, not at this junction, and that measurement's gonna be less accurate, right? Because it's farther away from the right atria. All right, so you have this catheter in, now you want to measure a central venous pressure. Well, essentially what you're doing is you're just transducing a pressure off this catheter tip. But to do that, you have to make sure you zero the catheter, and this is really important. So what you typically will do is you'll have the patient lay flat, supine, flat on their back. And you'll have to zero the catheter at what we call the phlebostatic access, which is around the fourth intercostal space. So down here we have a human drawn uh, laying on their back. Here's an eyeball for them, right? Here's their mouth, nose, ear, is their chest. And the fourth intercostal space is going to be the fourth space, uh, the space between the ribs, Right, so ribs four and five. So you can count ribs, you know, if you were to count one rib, two ribs, three ribs, four ribs, five ribs. And you'd have your fourth intercostal space here. And the reason that they say measure this at the fourth intercostal space is because that is about the area where the right atrium is in the body. Because what you want to do is you want to zero this pressure at the right atrium because let's say you were to zero it lower, it was, you know, so you want the pressure to be zeroed right at the phlebostatic axis right around here, all right? If you zeroed it too low, then the body or the measurement would give you excess of this much, right? If you zeroed it too high way up here, then the measurement would give you excess of this much. So it'd be inaccurate. You want the zero read to be right at the KVH junction because that's zero. That is where the pressure that you want is um, the origin of the pressure that you want right at that cavoatrial junction. All right, where if, if you zero it too high or too low, you'll get wildly inaccurate numbers. So you have to zero it at that phlebostatic axis, which is right around the fourth intercostal space, uh, mid axillary line, ax axilla being armpit. So kind of in this mid axillary line, because if you lay it on your back and you're looking at someone's side, that's about where their heart should lie. Um, you'll get inaccurate measurements if it's too high or too low. Um, uh, if the zero is too high or too low.
Okay, so now you have a central line in the subclavian vein or internal jugular vein. You have the end of that central line sitting right at the caveoatrial junction. You've laid the patient flat. You've zeroed the central venous pressure right at this phlebostatic axis, the fourth intercostal space, right where that right atrium is sitting. And now you actually get a measurement. Well, what are normal values? It's a pressure. So it's measured in millimeters of mercury, just like any other pressure. But we wrote a number of different values here because you'll see all sorts of ranges for what a normal central venous pressure is. Um, you'll see some, uh, some resources will say zero to six. Some will say eight to 12. And it depends a little bit on what you're looking for. Um, for what the normal is. I know that sounds a little counterintuitive because a normal should just be a normal, but everyone's different, right? Young, old, obese, normal size, uh, normal heart, abnormal heart. Um, so in our opinion, normal CVP is anywhere between four to eight millimeters of mercury. That tends to be about what we go with. So let's just say the CVP is too high. So CVP is high. Let's say the CVP we measured, uh, you got a good measurement it was zeroed right at that phlebostatic axis, and the CVP came back at 18 millimeters of mercury. Well, if we think about what that means, that means that pressure at the caveoatrial junction is very high. And if we think about what you're measuring, you're measuring blood in blood vessels and heart. So that can mean that you are hypervolemic. You have too much volume in your blood vessels, and it's leading to a high CVP. Now, there's a lot of challenges with using CVP measurements this way because it is measuring a pressure. It's not measuring fluid. It's just measuring the pressure in the area that the central line is sitting. And it could be a surrogate for volume status, but it's not perfect, right? Because other things you could picture affect it too. So if you're measuring a pressure right in this area, that's what we said, we're measuring a pressure right here. Well, what if you had really bad tricuspid valve regurgitation? Blood should be flowing in one direction, right? The atria contracts, blood goes through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle, the ventricle contracts, and blood goes up the pulmonary uh, vascular system into the lungs. But if you have a tricuspid valve regurgitation, some of this blood is actually getting regurgitated back into the right atrium and is shooting up towards that central line. And that will cause this pressure, the CVP, to be high and has nothing to do with fluid. Right? It just has to do with the fact that you have tricuspid regurgitation. Let's say you have a dilated right atrium that isn't able to squeeze that well. That'll cause your CVP to be higher because that pressure will seem higher because the right atrium can't squeeze all that blood out um, as robustly as someone else. So there are different things that affect the CVP, and it's things we'll talk about in future videos. Um, but a lot of people traditionally use CVP measurements uh, as like this a equivalent for volume status, and it's not perfect. It gives you an idea, but it's not perfect. So on the other hand, let's say your CVP is really low. Uh, your CVP is just one millimeter of mercury. Well, that means the pressure at that caveoatrial junction is very low. And if we're going with the surrogate for volume status, that could mean you're hypovolemic, dehydrated, hypovolemic, and that you might need fluid resuscitation Compared to that high CVP, that can mean you're hypervolemic. And we'll do a more advanced discussion on this uh, in future videos, but we just wanted to give that introductory sense there. All right, that is the basics of central venous pressure measurements, um, how to get them, how to um, zero at the phlebostatic axis, what normal values are, uh, and a brief glimpse into what abnormal values might look like and why. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Definitely subscribe, hit the bell button. We appreciate y'all. Check out our Patreon page if you have an interest in that. Uh, no further ado, stay well, keep learning. We'll see you next time.